know, I won't be able to convince you, but there's someone else that is able to convince you. There's that little tugging that takes place deep inside our hearts that as you're sitting there, you begin to get nervous and something is happening inside. You don't know what it is, but something is bugging you. My friend, it's the Holy Spirit. They don't have that own life anymore. They've been delivered by the power of God. God is going to be challenging us in a very definite way to go back into those cities in faith believing that God is greater than any problems that may exist within those cities. How many can say amen? Remember who we are. We are a people that God has given a mission to. Welcome to our World Conference 2020 online experience, and it has been so powerful. I can literally say, and we've been hearing all the reports, it's been life-changing for many of you. You know, what's interesting is that a lot of us were there in all those different conferences, but there's a whole lot that didn't experience the conferences from the 90s, the World Conferences, and, and, and the different ones that we've been showing so it's beautiful that now so many have experienced. And you know, it started off so profoundly with our founder, our spiritual father, Pastor Sonny, on Monday night. And how I really felt like he just, as he always does, cast vision. And he's so visionary, uh, even in all this that's taking place, you know. I thank God that he was sensitive, him and Sister Julie, to the Holy Spirit in that uh, presenting this world conference. And, and, um, and it's been timely Oh my God, it's been so timely because so many have been inspired. We've been hearing so many testimonies from around the world of those that had not experienced it and those that, that were there and experienced it, how it's just lit a fire inside of us, especially in times like this that we're living in. So it has been so, so great. And you know, it's a blessing to be part. I want you to know that you are part of a powerful, powerful, the, the largest inner city ministry in the world, and I, I also believe uh, it's profound because we are an end times ministry. God raised up in 1967. He raised up a man from New York City, and a woman, a young woman from East LA, and and the the result has been a worldwide ministry. And you and I are a part of that. And so this is where the heart of Jesus is. This is where the heart of Jesus is. That's why. I proudly wear my United We Can pin because it's through United We Can that we're able to fund all these works and be able to have these works in so many different countries around the world. We're not just a local, we're, we're a global ministry, which means we have our local churches, and, but we also have a worldwide ministry. We're global. And it's through your giving that we're able to continue to reach the world and be able to fulfill the Great Commission. You know, the Lord, one of the last things he said, and he was not only speaking to those apostles that were there, but he was speaking to us, the church. He said, go and make disciples of all men. And that's what we're doing through Victor Outreach, through our United We Can giving. It's through our United We Can giving that we're able to fulfill the Great Commission. And I thank God for a pastor, for leaders of our movement, that are founders that are visionary and have a heart for the lost because really, and I always tell our church, the center of gravity for, for our church is reaching people. And I thank God for this great ministry of Victory Outreach. And right now we have the privilege to give an offering to United We Can. And I want to encourage all of you, I know you've been hearing this, but if you're not a United We Can member, then it's time for you to become one. And if you're, and you are one, and you're a dollar a day, or maybe 500 or silver, it's time to go up to the gold, or it's time to go up to platinum, or to diamond, the diamond club, or to the, the diamond plus, which is the top level giving that Doreen and I are so privileged. See, it's a privilege to be part of something that is so profound that we're helping fulfill the Great Commission. So at this time, we're going to, we're going to receive an offering, and we want you to be a part of it, you know, uh, right there uh, through your giving. You know, there's diff three different ways to give. Um, and so um, it's right there on your screen. You know, you can uh, do the push pay. You can text give. Of course, you can always give your envelope and your online giving. 
It's very important. Also, we have a QR code that's up on your screen right now. You can scan that. Take out your phone right now. Just take out your phone right now and, and go ahead and it'll take you right to the, being able to give. And give a love, give, give your best today. Give your best because the Lord will give back to you good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. And, and, and the Bible says uh, that whatever a man sows, that will he also reap. And so we thank God that we could sow uh, to an end time ministry that is really impacting. And you know, you've seen the World Conference. You've seen the people from all over the world that have been touched through this ministry. And, if, and this is the best soil you could ever sow. Let me tell you something. This is the best soil you could ever sow your seed to. So are you ready to give? Are you ready? Come on, let's, 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 let's honor the Lord. And let's say a prayer right now. We want to say a prayer for you. So let's pray. Father, we thank you for the privilege, because it's an act of worship, Lord, that we're able to give back. And Lord, this ministry was birthed in your heart, and then you, you, you put this into the heart of our founders. And we thank you, Lord God, for their obedience. And we thank you for that we're able to sow into a ministry that is impacting the world, Lord, through our United We Can Giving. Lord, we love you. We love you and we thank you for this privilege. We thank you that we can worship you now in this area. And we thank you for the response of your people in this, in this offering. We thank you for the response of your people going to another level in the United We Can Giving. Lord, we love you and we give you all the praise and the honor and the glory. And everybody says, come on, say it with me. And everybody says, amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Generosity made simple. Text VOI to 77977. Select the giving link. Enter your amount and gift type. If it's your first time giving, enter your payment details and confirm your gift. Thank you for your generosity. Now we can stay connected wherever you go. Download the Victory Outreach app and stay connected with Victory Outreach International. Get important updates and announcements. Learn more about our ministries. Stay connected with events, prayer requests, and more. Watch the latest video in our media section. Easily share content on social media within the app. Give from your phone in seconds. A convenient way to stay connected. God's people are not going to go back the same. And then God says, where you said you could not do it, that's the place that I have called you because you're not going to do it, but I'm going to be doing it through you. There are thousands and thousands of people that have been touched, that have come through the home, that have come to our churches. Not only do we have a local vision, but God is going to send you out, and he's going to send you out, and he's going to send you out, and he's raising us up, and many of you are going to be pastors, you're going to be evangelists. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. Well, my name's Chris Sorensen. Um, I'm currently 28 years old. I'm originally from Las Vegas, Nevada. I grew up there my whole life till um, I was 21. Um, I was around probably about 10, 11 years old um, where I had came in contact with heroin, um, crystal meth, weed, um, and I had gotten exposed to all that um, from my mom using. It was just, it was a horrible life, literally hopeless, depression, um, suicide came in, thinking thoughts that I, I never thought in my life. I was 20 years old when I, when I went into the men's home. I felt, I felt freedom. Internally, I felt freedom. I felt, I felt uh, liberty, you know, like, like literally at that moment, the, the, the bondage of, of sin, the bondage of addiction, all that got lifted. My greatest blessing is probably my daughter, probably my daughter and my marriage. I never thought I'd be able to have kids, I never thought I'd be able to have, you know, be married. And for God, not only to restore, but just to bring something, something new. I went to South Africa and I, I seen firsthand where our finances go to. And ever since that day, it has opened up my mind. It's, it's not just visually seeing it, but, but seeing the, the families. Every dollar changes lives. Helps someone change. Someone like me.
Look how far you've come. God, we offer, oh God, our lives to you, Lord. And I pray there will be a revival of prayer, a revival of sacrifice, a revival, oh God, of paying the price, oh God, from the young to the oldest in the name of Jesus. What we need, what we're looking for is Abishai's of the vision, protectors and guardians of the calling and the vision of victory outreach. has given us an overall purpose of reaching the inner cities of the world. Now, uh, I have the privilege to be able in a few moments to present a documentary of our founder, our spiritual father, Pastor Sonny, that was filmed in the late 70s, somewhere in the in the 70s, I don't know if it was the late 70s, but the 70s. And I remember I came to Victor Outreach, went into the men's home in 1982, the beginning of 82. And, you know, it's powerful because even back then I heard about the vision, even being there in the home, uh, wasn't thinking about the calling of God or anything, just wanted to, you know, like many of you, uh, change and have a better life. And, and uh, I heard vision and, uh, and Pastor Sonny now, 50 some years later, him and sister Julie are still traveling around the world. After this pandemic is over, they'll continue to plant churches all over the world and do the work of God. And you're going to have the privilege. So I want you to pay attention today. Uh, don't get distracted. Uh, you need to see the early years and how there's such a powerful anointing on this documentary, a powerful anointing. Even when Pastor Sonny's doing the altar call and talking to people, you could sense and feel the anointing of God, that God had called them, separated them, and raised up a ministry, a worldwide ministry for such a time as this. And you and I are part of it. And it's profound because you're going to see the vision. You're going to hear the vision. You're going to see the, the beginnings and, 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 and uh, how, you know, I think of that scripture in Job where it says, despise not humble beginnings. It says, Though your beginning may seem so humble, Job 8, 7, yet so prosperous and blessed will your future be. And, uh, and so we want to present to you, and you know, you're going to hear vision. Vision, it, it keeps us passionate, it unites us, it directs us, and it's so powerful. So we want you to pay attention now, and we present to you the documentary, the film documentary, Sunny. I'm <laughs> 
sunny don't feel blue somebody's watching over you and sunny this might be your day Chasing rainbows, chasing dreams. Life's been a chain of endless schemes and sunny. This might be your day. Life for you. It's been a high and rugged hill You've had to climb And you've been climbing all alone You don't make friends You don't have time And just when it seems you need No one cares No one seems to hear your prayers But that's not true Sonny, you're gonna shine Sonny Don't feel blue Somebody's watching This might be your day, your golden day today, sunny. This might be your day, sunny. New York City, a vast megalopolis a city teeming with millions, a city whose streets have become the breeding grounds for crime and violence. It was in this city that Sonny Argonzoni spent his formative years. He walked these streets. This is where he made lifelong friendships. It was in these streets that Sonny Argonzoni found himself entangled in the web of drug addiction. Today, he is the founder and director of Victory Outreach, and author of the bestseller, Once a Junkie. When Sonny was converted, God placed a calling on his life to go back to the ghetto, back to the shooting galleries, back to the prisons, to take the message of deliverance. Sonny understands the agony of heroin addiction. He understands that desperate cry. It's that despairing cry that has compelled him to dedicate the rest of his life to reaching others. Yo, brother! What's happening, my man? What's going on, man? Hey, check this out, bro. You, you got a cigarette, man? Yo, but you spare them? Get that ring, get the ring. Get the ring, get the money, come on. Get the money, hurry up. I got it, man. Ready? You call it out, I'll kill you, hear me? It's been really a miracle. When he started going out with that company, I was so worried. I tried to help him myself my own way. I tried hard. Day after day, he was getting worse and worse. He was getting in trouble. Every day, more and more. 
So I kept worrying and worrying until one day I knew I couldn't do it by myself. Somebody told me he was on drugs and I couldn't believe it. But then when he went to jail, I knew it was true that he was on drugs. That was horrible for me. I couldn't take it. I started praying day and night. Then God spoke to me. I had a great experience. When God told me, don't worry, everything's going to be all right. He couldn't believe that God could speak to me, but that was true. He spoke to me because I prayed day and night for years. And then, uh, th then that's what happened one night. I had a phone call that he gave his heart to God. And I was so happy. And I thank God that now he's a preacher, he's a minister, and I'm very proud of him. The tombs, the name is all it implies. Behind those thick, cold, concrete walls is the perpetual stopover on the junkie's journey into death. My first introduction to Sonny was back in 1961 when Reverend Dave Wilkerson came to me and he said, uh, Paul, he says, you are very familiar with the criminal justice system in New York. And we have one of our young converts by the name of Sonny Argonzoni. He's been arrested 11 times. Uh, he's been on drugs for 10 years and, and he's been spending about $75 a day to support his habit. However, he has a case that's pending right now in Manhattan Criminal Court for a burglary charge. I wonder if you would go and represent uh, Sonny when he goes to court. And I can recall going up to the, uh, one of the district attorneys who was presenting some of the cases, and especially Sonny's case, and I said to him, I said, Sir, uh, I'm here on my own time. I'm a police inspector, and uh, I'm affiliated with Teen Challenge. I wonder if we could do something for Sonny. Uh, Sonny has been delivered from drugs, and he's helping kids in Coney Island and Beffitt Stuyvesant and up in the Bronx. I wonder if he could help us so he wouldn't have to be incarcerated. The district attorney looked at me uh, eyeball to eyeball, he says, who are you kidding? He says, no one kicks the habit. Well, let me see what I can do. Then a judge spoke, he says, okay. He says, Sonny Argonzoni, he says, I'm gonna give you a year in prison, but the execution of the sentence is suspended. I'm gonna parole you in the custody of Inspector Delina and Teen Challenge. I hope that you'll be a good example. Well, uh, we were just delighted. We, we were beaming from ear to ear and the, uh, the lawyers and the detectives and the policemen and Sonny's father began to cry and the Reverend argue why we just went out rejoicing in the Lord what, had he, what he had done. And uh, it was just, it's just so fantastic what had happened that we know that God had a purpose in releasing Sonny and what a great job he had done in the ministry of Teen Challenge. After using drugs for six years, I was desperate to change. I had been incarcerated 10 times. I kicked a countless number of habits. I had even tried going to Lexington, Kentucky for a six month cure. But the minute I hit the big city, I was back in the spoon. Then in the winter of 1962, I was invited to the Teen Challenge Center. It was here that I met the ex-gang member, Nicky Cruz. I remember the day when Sonny Argensoni walked in into this home I can see the scarf of sins right on his face. And for a half, he came with a lot of doubt. He had been through so many programs, had been locked up many times. He had completely lost the size of hope. And yet he walked in without expecting that he's going to come in into a miracle. The agony of a man that he needed a fix of heroin. A man that was perspiring, twisting, vomiting. A man that was craving like an animal for a, for a chemical that would give him some release or either some peace. This was no hospital. But we have Jesus Christ. And it has to be Jesus Christ who has to deal with the, with the problems, with the need, with the corruption, with the sin, of this man.
was in these streets that I first met David Wilkerson when he first came from Pennsylvania. When I first met him, I thought he was a narcotic agent and he was out to lock us up. I remember that many of us, we were scared at first, but then we found out that he came and told us that he was a country preacher. We all were really surprised because we wouldn't think that a country preacher would come all the way from Pennsylvania to these streets to tell us about the power of God. If you knew Sonny Arkansas like I know him, you'd have to believe in miracles. I met him in the streets of New York, dirty, skinny, frightened, bound by drugs. If you'd have told me then that this young man there with a bullet hole in his leg, dirty needle marks in his arm, with a praying mother, would ever become a great man of God and a legend in his own time, I would have never believed it. It's been a great personal joy of mine to watch over the years this young man expand his ministry around the world. Sonny has known all of the United States in junkie land. You go to the streets of Harlem, they know about Sonny, they know about him in Los Angeles, the real junkie preacher. Pastor, what we fondly call the all junkie church of Los Angeles. <laughs> What was that, that, uh, that man talking about? You know, what about victory, victory? What's the name? Sonny Akinzoni. Man, if you were interested, I'd tell him. Oh, that's what he gave me, you know. Victory Temple. Where, what? St. Louis Street. 126, St. Louis. Maybe one of these days I'll go on. <laughs> you go to Jesus? Jam. Be careful with that. That's a good start. I'm sorry, I don't want you to OD on me, but no, that's all right. Yeah. getting harder now. Yeah. Yeah. That's some good that's some, that's some good stuff. Be careful, huh? Hey, brother, get up, man. 
We first started this ministry of victory outreach in uh, an area which is called the Flats, or better known as Aliso Village. It's a ghetto type of area where, where there is gang problem and uh, many drug addicts that walk the streets. And there are many projects in that area where the pe these people live. In this area is where my wife and I, we moved into the project so that we could identify with the people there and also uh, go out and talk to the drug addicts and gang members in the streets. When I first met Sunny, I thought I was going to be a missionary to Mexico. And little did I dream that I'd been married to a man that would have a call of God to go into the ghettos to win the rejects of society. I, uh, it was just so far from my imagination that, that he would be called in this way. In the beginning of the ministry, we had no support whatsoever. All we had was Sonny's vision that God was going to raise a mighty work. So we had to move to the projects. That's the uh, a housing project in Los Angeles, and our rent was $36 a month. And sometimes we'd get two months behind on our rent. But Sonny, that wouldn't, that wouldn't discourage him at all. He'd still go out and be talking to fellas and bringing them home for meals, and one day Sonny brought home six young men to talk to them in our living room about, about a new, new way of life for them. And very casually he turned to me and told me, Julie, I want you to go to the kitchen and fix them something to eat. Well, at that moment I didn't want to tell him, Sonny, there's nothing to eat in the kitchen because I didn't want to bring down the things that he was telling them. He was telling them how great and how good God was and how mighty he was. And if I was to turn around and say, well, there's nothing in the kitchen, I couldn't bring it, I couldn't bring the gospel down like that. So I said, Lord, I'm going to trust you. I'm going to go into that kitchen, and I'm going to fix something to eat. When I went into the cupboards, I found a box of pancake mix, but with only a small little bit of it in, in, in the package. And, and I knew that God had to perform a miracle for me. I had a little bit of butter and a little bit of syrup, so I began to, to pray. And then I got a bowl, and I poured the pancake mix in the bowl. I got a little bit of water and poured it in, and I just was believing God for it. I closed my eyes and began to pray and stir it. And right before my eyes, as I opened my eyes, I saw it come up to the top of the bowl. I had to grab another bowl and pour the rest of the mix inside the other bowl. And, and right before my eyes, God performed the miracle in providing for us. And I made pancakes for all the fellas and for Sonny, and God was glorified that day. Every time I, I think about how how true God has been to his promises and, and how he's provided for us and how he's blessed us. I can't help but, but break before his presence because he's been so great and so mighty. why this decision that you're going to make tonight of accepting Jesus Christ as your personal Savior will tell whether you'll be happy or miserable. You know why this will tell whether you'll be happy or miserable? 
is because the person without Christ is a person that could never be happy. Now some people think, and especially young people, when they're walking that walk and talking that talk, you know what I mean by walking that walk and talking that talk? I mean, you know, that walk, you know, real, real bad, see? <laughs> or like they talk that talk, esta de aquella. Or esta suave, huh? Well, sometimes, you know, we take a look at Christianity, we hear about Jesus Christ, and we figure, man, that's only for squares. And you feel that there's a lot of fun in the things of the world, and, and getting high with wine or, or enjoying the things of the world, and you feel that's true happiness. But my friend, it can't be happiness without Christ. I'm not saying you don't get your kicks. You get a few kicks. When you get loaded, you get a kick for a little while. When you get drunk, you're you know, walking around and getting a kick for a little while and you want to take on the whole world and fight everybody. And then you embarrass your girlfriend and throwing up all over your suit. Those are kicks for a little while, but it's something that's not lasting. You know, I won't be able to convince you, but there's someone else that is able to convince you. There's that little tugging that takes place deep inside our hearts that as you're sitting there, you begin to get nervous and something is happening inside. You don't know what it is, but something is bugging you. My friend, it's the Holy Spirit. Throughout the years, the church and the ministry ha has really grown. We outgrew that small building that we had in uh, Aliso Village that we first started out in. And now we're in our new building uh, here and uh, it's still in East LA. Uh, but we have many people that, that come to the church and the church just uh, tripled from when we first started. And uh, out of these people that have come in and have come into the church, there are some of them that have gone to Bible school and also graduated from Bible school and now they're involved within the Victory Outreach Ministries. We have a few of them that are directors of, uh, of our homes. We have the Rehabilitation Home for Men. We also have uh, a Rehabilitation Home for Girls. We also have a ranch for boys. And then we have a very extensive uh, prison ministry where we have many people that are very much involved in the prison ministry. Nestled in the green rolling hills east of Los Angeles is the Hacienda Victoria, a refuge for young women who come here for help in kicking the heroin habit. Once out of the clutches of drug addiction, they shine forth as precious jewels, radiating the transforming power of God. You know, as I'm standing here and I see your faces looking at me, I remember when I first came into a home, when I first got off the streets, when I first stopped using heroin. You know, there was a time also when I was so strung out on drugs that I would try anything just to be able to make that next fix that I had to get because without that fix, I wouldn't be able to go on another day or maybe even another few hours. <laughs> it was such a possession on my life that I was just going almost insane. And uh, I believe most of you here have had this type of experience in your life. When you're just laying there, you know that there's no way that you're going to get out of it, and you go through them hours of a, of a sheer nightmare. It's, it's almost a living hell. That's what it is. It was during my uh, assignment to narcotics that I became aware of Victory Outreach. And at first, I guess like every other narcotic officer, I was very skeptical as to whether addicts could be converted or not. One day I was standing out on the sidewalk and I saw this girl who I knew was a longtime junkie. She was actually grabbing people as they walked by. He says, you know, one day I was in jail and somebody came and talked to me about uh, changing my way of life. I later found out that there was people from Victory Outreach 
through my contact with them and attending their church, I was converted and I gave up dope. I would have bet a million dollars that she never kicked a habit. That was quite a shock to me. And so I made a deal with her to uh, send her people that I would arrest and uh, see if she could do some good with them. One of the key facets of the Victory Outreach Ministries is our Victory Home Live-In Program. My name is Cal and this is my wife Beatrice. We're the directors of such a home. The homes play a twofold uh, purpose in that we work as a detoxification center and also we continue working with the individual once we have led him to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Generally we try to work with the men of the local area by going down into the streets and working with him on a person-to-person -person basis. We find that there's a lot of problems in dealing with this type of, a, uh, of an individual, that is to say a drug addict. Number one, he comes from a background that is completely broken and, and confused and in total chaos. So it's quite a problem in, in, in trying to get some kind of order established in his life. But once he's come into the home and he's gone through his withdrawals, which generally takes a couple of weeks, we're able to work with him personally and then continue on working with his wife. The men that come here, their wives is um, a little different, I think, I believe a little more difficult because these women are, are bitter, They're, they've been hurt many years, and most of them have not known what it is to have a real husband, a real father to their children. So that when the men here do get converted and go to their wives, a lot of them at first will not believe that their husbands have changed. Just a few miles outside of Los Angeles in Victorville, California, is the Victory Boys Ranch. This ranch was established in 1972 because of the dire need to reach young gang members before they became involved in hardcore heroin addiction. Gene Rodriguez, a former addict, and his wife Cynthia are the ranch directors. They were both reached through the ministry of Sonny Argonzoni. Life's been cruel, life's been hard But don't you know that Jesus died So you could be a child of God I was born a child of darkness And I was raised a child of scorn Until I met the King of Kings And I found my life reborn When I was in, in institutions, uh, the majority of the counselors there did not come from the type of setting that I came out of, so they didn't understand. You know, many of the boys that come here can't say that because I come out of the same setting. You know, after being a drug addict for uh, so many years of my life and being in state prison and institutions, I find that, that I'm able to communicate with the boys, you know, and uh, uh, they can say, well, you have not been through it and you don't know what's happening. Because I do know what's happening. I've been there. This is what Victory Boys Ranch is all about. It's working with them, the total boy, to eventually be the total man. People want to know, what can you do for me? But uh, they misunderstand that there isn't anything my wife and I can do. It's God that, that does it. Child of pain, child of sin. Life's been cruel, life's been hard. But don't you know that Jesus died so you could be a child of One of the many friends of Sonny Argonzoni's Victory Outreach program is TV and motion picture star Dale Evans. Her heartfelt concern for the youth of America has motivated her involvement in the Victory Outreach program. It was a great honor for me to meet Dale Evans, and I'd like to introduce her. Dale, would you come?
thank you very much. Do you know I've been blessed so much, I've heard so much tonight, I'm just ready to go home with a heart full of joy in Jesus Christ, aren't you? Isn't it wonderful? You know, if anybody had ever told me about 20 years ago that I would be here in Apple Valley and seeing these wonderful boys give their testimony and being part, being privileged to be a part of this Victory Boys Ranch, I want to tell you, I would have said, well, you're, you're out of your mind. There are no trees up there in that desert. I would have said all kinds of things. But I want to tell you that I love this high desert. And I'm so thrilled that the Lord has seen fit to establish a home for these boys up here. And my son asked me to commit my life in total to Jesus Christ that night. I said, no, I'm in pictures. I said, I I'm a Christian. I believe in Jesus. I accepted him as Savior when I was 10. He said, but you don't know him. He said, what a difference. He said, if you really knew him in a personal, vital way, you could throw away all the books you read on peace of mind and Eastern cults and all the rest of it, release from nervous tension and you name them. I was reading all I could get my hands on to try to resolve guilt in my soul for wrongdoing. I couldn't sleep. It's all in here. The rules are here and I had broken them and I knew I had. And I said, give me a week to think about it. And I went home and the Lord unraveled my life right in front of me. And I saw the sin in my life. The next Sunday I went to that church and I acknowledged Jesus Christ personally. And I asked him to come into my life and take it over in full and break my life if he had to, but use my life for his glory. And it's difficult to explain to you, just like these boys a while ago, it's difficult to say. What happens when the Lord comes in like a flood? When he comes in by his Holy Spirit and washes your soul clean with the blood he shed on the cross of Calvary for that purpose and pours his Holy Spirit into your life and creates a new creature in Christ Jesus when you are born again. Freddie, it's me, Sonny. Oh, man, Open get out of here, Sonny. Listen, I don't want to hear it. Freddie, listen, I, I know I heard you just got out of jail, now, and I also here. heard Go about your brother. Listen, somebody else, man. Listen, man, open the door. I got to talk to you. Listen to somebody else, man. I don't want to hear it. Get out of here. Get out of here. Would you listen to me for just a few moments? I don't want to hear that. Christ is going to change your life, Freddie. Christ ain't going to change He's going to change your life. He's done it for so many others, Freddie. Listen, he's done it for so many others, Freddie. Now, listen, God has been dealing with you. You know God has been dealing with you. No, he hasn't. Freddie, listen to me. Get out of here. Go somewhere else and tell somebody about your dad. Listen, Freddie, you know God has been dealing with you. You know God has been dealing with you. No, he hasn't. Freddie, listen to me. Get out of here. Go somewhere else and tell somebody about your God, man. Don't tell me. Why don't you throw that knife away, huh? Why don't you give God a chance? You know, deep inside, you want to serve God. God can't change me, Freddie. God is able to change me. God can't, man. He's just coming over here every day, man, bugging me, man. God is dealing with you like that. I don't want to change, man. There's a lot of feeling in your life, Freddy. God, God can't change me anyway. And he's going to change if you give him a chance. Listen, why don't you throw that knife away and give God a chance in your life? He's done it for so many others. He did it for Bobby. He did it for Cal. He did it for so many other guys. He's able to do it for you if you give him a chance. Why don't you just throw that knife away and turn your life over to him? You won't have peace. You won't have happiness until you surrender your life to God him. God can't change me. Yes, he could, God Freddy. Can't just me. try him. Give him a chance and he'll do the work in your life. Will you please give him a chance? In fact, right now he's working in you. This is God that's dealing in your life. Oh, God. Oh, God, help me, God. Oh, God, change me, God. Change me, God. 
Oh, God, change me. I'm tired. I'm tired. God, change me. I remember when I used to walk these streets, man, and hang around in these corners, you know, and, and used to think that I was bad, but I was just putting a big front, man. And the inside, I was screaming for help. And these corners right here got me to prisons, man, to jails and prisons. And no, none of the homeboys and homegirls did nothing for me. They don't send you no money. They don't send you no, no letters or nothing like that. Until I got out and I met Jesus Christ, man. I could stand here and say that I'm a Christian and I'm proud, man, that I'm a Christian, man. And it takes more guts to stand here and say that you're a Christian than to stand there, man, with an emptiness inside your heart, just screaming for someone to give you a little bit of love, a little bit of understanding, a little bit of understand, of attention, man. And the one that could give you all that love and attention, man, is Jesus Christ, man. Lord, I come before you this day thanking you for all the wonderful things that you have done. Lord, when I think about these lives that at one time were wrecked by sin, where families were divided and there was no love within the homes, when I think about these lives that had to be out in the streets day and night working angles to support their habits, when I think about these young people that were out there in the streets without hope and without love in their hearts. But, oh God, you reached down your hand of mercy and you extended love unto them and you changed their lives. Oh Lord, I thank you also for the many, many more that will come into this beautiful experience. I thank you for the moving of thy Holy Spirit and reaching out to families and reaching out to young people and changing them. Oh, I thank you in advance for the wonderful things that you will continue to do. Lord, I pray that you continue to reach the attic. I pray that you continue to reach the gang member. I pray that you continue to reach these families that are lost and bound. And I will forever give you the glory and I will praise you for it because it's through your tender mercy and loving kindness that this is possible. Thank you, Jesus, for all the wonderful things you have done and for the many wonderful things that you will continue to do. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. The Word was God, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we
We know you've been watching this, and I know that God has spoken to you and touched your heart, not only for those of us that have been in the outreach for a long time, but maybe some of you are watching, and um, a friend or family member told you to tune in, and you're feeling what I'm feeling, that, that tugging of the Holy Spirit. You could see in Pastor Sonny's heart a genuine love uh, for the hurting, for the lost, for those that are bound by some type of addiction. And we want you to know what that is, the love of Jesus Christ that was put in his heart. He, understand, he understood the pain of the drug addict. He understood the pain of those on the streets. He understood the pain. We understand the pain because many of us have come from that. We want you to know if you're watching and you're going through something today, God loves you. And he's knocking on the door of your heart. The, Jesus said in Revelation 3.20, Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. If anyone will hear my voice and open up the door, the door of your heart, and give your life to Jesus Christ. And I can sense and feel that the Holy Spirit is tugging on people's heart right now. Maybe you're a backslider. Maybe you were part of this ministry at one time, but you're not where you should be with God. Maybe you were on fire helping build in your local church, and maybe now you're just kind of doing your own thing. The Bible says that the backslider in the book of Proverbs the backslider in heart is filled with his own ways. In other words, not really following Jesus, but following him afar off. And the Lord is calling you back to be in the center of his perfect will. He's calling you to surrender your life back to him, or maybe to give your life to the Lord. And if that's you, I want you to repeat this prayer with me right there where you're at. I want you to bow your head and close your eyes. This is an opportunity for eternity. Opportunity for eternity. Say this prayer with me. Bow your head, close your eyes, and just say, Jesus, come on, say it. Say, Jesus, forgive me of all my sins. With that blood that you shed on the cross, wash away all my sins, all my failures, all my struggles. Forgive me. Write my name in your book of life that I may have eternity with you. And I acknowledge you right now. I confess you as my personal Lord and Savior. And those of you that have backslidden in your heart, just say, Lord, I surrender right now. Forgive me, Lord. I won't be filled with my own ways anymore, but I surrender my will to your will. I surrender my life. Thank you for your precious blood. And Lord, we pray right now for everyone watching. Pray for everyone, Lord, and those that are even that are on fire and right with you. Thank you for what we've experienced this week through this conference, this global experience, online conference. It's been so powerful. We love you. We give you all the praise and all the honor and all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. You know, I want to thank our founders, Pastor Sonny and Sister Julie. On behalf of, I know we all feel this in the whole Victory Outreach around the world. Thank you for your sensitivity for souls and for the hurting and the lost. Forever grateful for this ministry. Forever grateful for this ministry in my own life. Forever grateful. Pastor Sonny, Sister Julie, we love you. We love them, right, Victory Outreach? We love them. Our founders, our spiritual parents, thank God for their sensitivity. You know, this World Conference, this global online experience, Thank God for their sensitivity. I think it's been so, so refreshing for all of us. And we thank God for their sensitivity, right, Victor Outreach? And, and uh, you know, a time like this, when all these things are taking place, that they were sensitive. And I'm grateful to God for this ministry. And one of the ways that we show our gratitude is not just with empty words or words, but we do it with action. We do it with action. And that's why, once again, I want to remind you, and it's not over. It's not over tonight. Um, Pastor Sonny and Sister Julie will be coming back and, and hosting, and we're going to have uh, evangelist Reinhard Bunke, who is witness to millions, who's had cr crusades with, you know, almost a million people in attendance, uh, 800,000, 700, all all over the world, especially in the continent of Africa. And so you don't want to miss out. We had them at our world conference. I remember it's going to be powerful. But uh, you know what? I want to remind you to, to do this. Let somebody know 
I want you to invite somebody to tune in tonight at 7. We should have the largest audience. Our, our Friday nights have always been so tremendous in our world. Con I can't wait till we have our next mighty man of God that we're looking forward to in November, God willing, and we're praying. And I can't wait till our world conference next year. We can all come together and see each other as a family. But until then, tonight, you need to call somebody. You need to start watch parties. You need to invite. We need to make sure everybody from all our congregations are tuning in all around the world. And uh, so that's going to be tonight. And... Uh, once again, I just feel the Holy Spirit so that, that, that documentary, even back then, Pastor Sonny and Sister Julie were, were, were on the cutting edge and doing films and reaching people. And uh, I just feel such a sense of gratitude to be part of such a great ministry. Let's show our gratitude and our appreciation, not just with words, but actions, once again, through our United We Can giving. Uh, we're going to put the QR code up on the screens. I want to challenge you. Sow another seed. Sow a seed. I know I feel moved. And I, whenever I feel moved, I don't just let it be empty, but with action. So there, just take out your phone right now. Scan the QR code. God will bless it. He'll get back to you. Good measure, pressed down and shaking together. I've learned that. My, my pastor has taught me that. You can now give God. So be loving, be caring, and be giving. Be generous. On behalf of Pastor Sonny, and Sister Julie, once again, until we see you tonight, God bless you. We love you. Thank you for tuning in today to our live broadcast. You too can also be part of giving right there where you're at, whether you're watching at home or on the go, simply by clicking on the link in the description below or through our Victory Outreach International app. Let's take a look at how easy it is to give. Generosity made simple. Text VOY to 77977. Select the giving link. Enter your amount and gift type. If it's your first time giving, enter your payment details and confirm your gift. Thank you for your generosity. Now we can stay connected wherever you go. Download the Victory Outreach app and stay connected with Victory Outreach International get important updates and announcements. Learn more about our ministries. Stay connected with events, prayer requests, and more. Watch the latest video in our media section. Easily share content on social media within the app. Give from your phone in seconds. A convenient way to stay connected. <laughs>